So I made this shape in wings that's a bit like a tennis ball, but not a tennis ball. And then later on, I saw this video by Peter, modeling in Modo, and thought, hang on a minute, this shape looks kind of familiar, like this sort of pattern is occurring. But in Peter's video, he starts with a dodecahedron, and in mine, I start with a cube. So, well, you know, what's going on here? Somehow, there must be a dodecahedron inside the cube that I was working on. So that's the idea I want to explore in this video. It's not going to be in particular about making something, but first of all, we'll start by replicating what goes on here. So you can see, you've seen this video, or you can watch this video if you want, but I'll run through that as well, and then we'll have a little further think. So if I just go uh, with the initial idea where I was with the the cube, so I started with the cube, selected the entire object, selected the vertexes, and beveled them down. So these corners now coincide, so I need to clean that up. Then with the corners selected, press C to connect. And I need to make sure that there's only five edges uh, joining in each corner. So if I select that one and use the turn command, I can now check that all corners have five edges. And there are, I think, 12 corners, which is where this is getting to be like a, a dodecahedron. So I now select this entire object and smooth and then I selected a couple of edges in, oh, not those two possibly, like these two, I for identical, and then bevel those and select inverse. And you can see here, this arrangement of patches, although I've not spherized it, creates this nice pattern, which is what I was seeing in that football. So if I just take this and slide it off to, I don't know, one side along the z-axis, right? So we've got that one as... Uh, uh, if I, oh, there's a different color, so uh, G, I, switch to face, right click, material, and dark, make it dark. Okay, so you can see the pattern on there. Right, I'm going to start now with a dodecahedron and try and replicate this. So it's got a patch that side and a patch running this way. I should rotate it 90 degrees, shouldn't I? Never mind. I'll probably work with this. So, so I'll right click and inset that a certain amount. Then I am going to rotate this, so I'm going to get confused. Rotate that one on the y axis 90 degrees so it lines up. So I want a patch here and a patch here. Right click, right click inset uh, with the control key down so I can set the same amount and then do it on these opposite sides and inset then if I select I for identical and I'll inset them again select the entire thing and smooth it and I can I can spherize this counter so um, deform inflate tab 100 and then hopefully if I get hold of the if I get hold of that 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 that, that I for identical plus 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 something along those lines, select inverse, right click, left click on the material, select dark. Hopefully you can see that there is, if I smooth that down once more and spherize it by using deform inflate tab 100, that there is a relationship, if I use the tab key so you can see, between these two. So what I got to thinking was, I'll just get rid of those now, can I go from a tetrahedron, hit tab then, to an icosahedron right at the other end of the perfect solid spectrum. I know sphere is going to require a lot of smoothing, but so let's just deal with the ones that don't have infinite number of faces. Um, it with you know with, with simple stages. So that was the idea that uh, this put in my mind. So I've selected my entire tetrahedron, select the vertexes, right click, and bevel it down. So that goes from uh, a, a tet Ted, was it called a tetrahedron? I think it is. So it goes a tetrahedron to an octahedron. Right. And select the entire thing and bevel it again. Oops, I've got to clean up the corners before I can do this. So I've now cleaned the corners up and select the entire thing and bevel it again. That takes me to this shape, hmm. which is on its way to being a cube. What if I do it with the edges? So 
if I bevel the edges, right, and then I, and then I clean up the corner, I can have a cube. So now I've had tetrahedron cube. I don't think I'm going to have torus. Uh, tetrahedron cube octahedron octo octoed. What does that look like? That looks like that. Okay, right. Let's see if we can get that one in there as well. I'm not sure I can, but let's give it a go. So if I select the corners and bevel that down, well, that gives me one of the shapes I'm going to need. If I select that all again and clean up and bevel that down, does that give me the octoed? That looks quite similar, doesn't it? Let's see if octoed, mm, triangles and squares on each side. I don't know, move that off to one side. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think so. It's just the size of the triangles is different. So if I select one of these triangles and scale, scale, unif scale uniform, I could probably get that shape pretty close. So that that's got that one right. Um, if I want to go back to where I was, I suppose I could collapse, go identical, and collapse those. So will it let me do that? Yes, it will. So that's taken me back to this shape which will allow me to select the entire shape, switch to vertex mode, C for connect. Now I want to make sure that each one of these arrives in a corner on its own, doesn't link up, so that's going to need some swapping around it seems. Because yeah, it's, not, it's not as convenient as it was last time. It seems to be more out of line, so let's uh, swap these two with the turn command and see if that gets us close to where we're looking for. Okay, and this one as well. So now each corner has five edges meeting in it. And then hopefully, if I clean this up, I'll make sure I clean this up and then bevel it down. Right, I should be get, able to get close. So identical and collapse. Okay, select this edge here, identical. So there's like a cube there, delete those. And that's created a sort of dodecahedron. In fact, it looks a bit wonky. I'm going to go back a step or two, see if I can do better than that. So if I was on this and select the entire thing and smooth it, and then I have these faces here that are going to be the pentagon. So if I, if I select opposite faces, delete, space to deselect, I should be able to build it up from this. And hopefully it'll be a bit more symmetrical. I don't know. We'll give it a go. But uh, it's just the fact that they're the, the ones with the f five points. So uh, so long as I can do them in pairs, it shouldn't take too long. Anyway, it's just an experiment anyway. All right, let's see. There we go there. And this is the, the last pair, hopefully. So take that one and that one. Delete. Select the entire thing. And clean it will get rid of the vertexes. It's still looking a bit wonky. I wonder if I should spherize it. So... We'll deform, inflate, tab 100, then select the entire thing and clean up. Actually, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? That looks far less wonky. Okay, so that's my dodecahedron, and now icosahedron. Select all the edges and bevel. Ah, oh, must have been a bit wonky because I've still got this. So select inverse and collapse. Uh, select the entire thing and clean up. That's given me my icosahedron. And I suppose I can uh, smooth that to give me a sphere. Smooth and smooth, but uh, you know, that could go on forever. I'll go back a bit. So what happens if I get all the edges and, uh, say, connect them up there? You can see this is sort of halfway between between the two. And you could just get, keep going on adding detail like this. But what I thought was interesting was the uh, the fact that the shapes, oh that's quite nice, the shapes seem to be all related. I'll, I'll call that my final spheroid then. I know it's not really a sphere, but it's an interesting shape. See, these look like cubes on their side. So it's just interesting to the relationship between the the very simple geometry, how each one it seems to have an, an, the other one hidden in it somehow that can be drawn out through a fairly simple operation. So, I don't know, that was the idea of this video. Not really anything very much. I was just uh, I was just curious by what I saw with the relationship between the shapes. So there you go. Yeah, I hope you found that interesting. It's just a bit of fun, really. Cheers now.